Hello everyone, this is part 2 of the introduction to the command line. In this part 2 we would however not focus on the command line itself, but focus on the infrastructure and software that you would be using in the rest of the course. The first would be a compute cluster which some of the labs would use. So a compute cluster consists of single machines that work together so that in many respects they can be viewed as a single system. They also have a resource and scheduler that monitors, monitors job resources and assigns jobs to nodes. A job scheduler operates efficiently if resources are fairly distributed across users of the system. So if you have a look at this diagram here, um, you would have a front end that's connected through, in this example, Ethernet, to all of the compute nodes. You as a user would then connect to the front end through the internet and then submit a job which would then be assigned to a compute node. For example, you would assign a BW alignment job that requires 32 cores and 16 gigs of RAM and then the job scheduler will decide based on your requirements to which node it will push the job. So, a job scheduler uses certain criteria to decide if job should run. For example, the priority, um, the compute resource availability, sorry, and the execu execution time allocated to a user, the number of simultaneous jobs allowed for a user, the estimated execution time, the elapsed execution time, and the job dependency. Now, PBS and SLIM are popular job scheduling systems and both have different ways of defining submission scripts. In this GitHub repo, you would see an example and it's also um, shown in, two, in, in these two examples on the slides. Um, what it differs between the two um, scheduling systems is the way that you do define the definition files um, in terms of how you request for resources. But if you look closely between them, you would see there is an overlap. Now, why I'm saying this is it might be some of you guys would work on a SLIRM cluster or would be working on a PBS cluster. So if you want to work, if you are working on a PBS cluster, you would need to get on a, on a node and what you what it means by getting on a node is to create an interactive um, session or submission. So for PBS, to get onto a compute node, requesting one node and one core for two hours, you would do a QSUB minus capital I minus L nodes equals one, meaning you select only one server or compute node with one core and you request that node for only two hours. Now, now, in a slim environment, it's slightly different. You would use srun, node equals 1, no, in task equals 1, times 120 minutes, and you are asking for a bash shell. The other part that we will be working with is uh, workflow tools. And workflow tools is a way to package complicated workflows in such a way that you can rerun it and it's reproducible and it really makes your life easier. Here on the right hand side you would see a, a 16S RNA workflow that was designed in Nextflow. So there are a few workflow languages um, available. Um, Nextflow is quite a popular uh, pipeline um, workflow tool that we at HDBionic is using. It provides a language and an engine. It's based on Groovy. It's relatively easy to be applied and um, if you want to have a look at some of the Nextflow code and a demo you can click on those links. And another language is the common workflow language but it's only a language. Um, you would need to have the CWL tool and Toil to provide the engine. It's very modular and well structured um, it's got a similar support um, community such as Nextflow. Then there's also Widdle, which is 
um, also a language and the engine is Cromwell um, Broad Institute and uses it and it's also supported by the Genome Alliance for Genomic and Health. Um, so that's on workflow. So the workflow that you'll be using would be later in the course would be developed in Nextflow. And then software containers. All of the software that you'll be running on would be containers. And a container is just a standard um, of packaging code and all its dependencies so that it is um, can be run across different environments. And two of the technologies that's quite popular is Docker and Singularity. But Docker has some security issues on some clusters, so most of the time Singularity is only supported. Now you can build your own uh, Singularity image from a Docker image, but you can also build your own Docker image, um, Singularity image from scratch, but there's also these image repositories such as um, Quay.io that hosts already created images which you can pull. And there's a biocontainers repository. So you can go and look, say for example, if SAM tools are not there already before you start building your own SAM tools container. Um, so our containers would be hosted on Quay.io. Um, so we'll be having we'll be using two con three containers actually, a fast QC container, a data two container, and then also a RStudio container. Now I'll give you some time to ask me any questions and then I will go through the practical that we'll be doing, a session just quickly on what, what needs to be done for that. Um, so thank you.